What's up, everybody, and welcome to this week's What's on Kickstarter. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some of the great, good, and not-so-good decks that have been released in the past week. Before we jump into it, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And ring the bell. While we're at it, let's take a quick word from our sponsor here. One of our favorite decks of 2020, the Wonder Playing Cards feature beautiful 3D back designs and an amazing tuck printed by Clove Street Press. Check out the latest version, Scarlet, live now on Kickstarter. Odorant Dumb Matuant is an opulent cottage deck designed with cuts and flourishes in mind, including metallic inks, fully custom faces to perfectly match the refacing theme and a handmade matte tuck box. ODM, now available on Kickstarter by our cards. Steve, I gotta say, man, there are a good amount of new decks this week. I'm not sure how I uh, feel about all of them, but I'm, I'm surprised. You know, we, we've been sitting at a pretty steady 10 the past couple weeks. I think this week we have like 13, 14 new decks. It's a pretty big one. Looks like we're starting to ramp up middle of the year, you know? Yeah. Summer's coming, maybe people are getting itchy for more cards. I guess, man, it's really interesting to see. And I gotta say, I uh, I like the 10 number. I think it's a simple one. There's not too many <laughs> decks that week. It allows everyone to get a fair kind of visibility to it all. One thing I always see is that when you start seeing more decks come out in the same week, not all of them are gonna fund. Sometimes the more decks there are, the less decks that get funded, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think, I feel like a month ago, there was so many bangers that were out that I think people ran out of money. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, without a doubt, man, you have so many like high visibility campaigns running at the same time and it gets very expensive very quickly. That's for damn sure. So let's check out this week's first great campaign. We have the Akaton Playing Cards, Futuristic Egyptian Mythology deck. Discover the powerful heroes of Akaton, the unique deck where science fiction and Egyptian mythology merge. I gotta say, man, this is actually a pretty dope deck. The Tuck is super vibrant. And I love the work that Kardec does. I think they're beautiful. Dude, their last deck, Skodos, was probably one of my favorite last year. I really love the Greek design of this with mythology. So I'm excited to see them transition to Egyptian mythology. Off yeah, they, they crushed it with that Skodos deck, yeah. too. I, I have to say, the one thing off the bat that stands out to me, and as I was scrolling through this, I noticed this campaign lends itself to a story, but yeah. there is no story. And so that's a bit yeah. of a bummer on this, you know, being a great campaign, it really, that's the one thing to me that it is missing. We roll into this and we see that it's going to be fulfilled by gamblers. It's going to be printed by Legends Playing Card Company. They have this nice little feature section, though I think they could probably afford to throw a little like header on it just to help break it up. But this is where a story yeah. would kind of set the tone first, where you really aren't worried about, you know, jumping right into bullet points because the bullet points kind of break the flow a little bit. Yeah, I would have liked to see like these two different decks. I would have liked to have seen the features kind of underneath those specific decks rather than all in one section because I kind of jumping back and forth seeing I'm kind of confused. Well, and, and honestly, too, and this is the one thing that I think even in multi deck ones, you can have like a centralized feature section that lists all of the shared features. And then under each deck, you list the specific features. So in this case, you know, Dusk Edition has two exclusive jokers, Neath and Anur. Dawn Edition has two exclusive jokers, Wajet and Capri. Like you could put those under each of the decks themselves to kind of make it relevant to each deck. Because in my mind, off the bat, when I'm at this point, I don't know what the Dusk Edition and the Dawn Edition are yeah. yet. And then we scroll down, right. we can say, okay, the blue is the Dusk and the Dawn is the white. But like either of right. those could have been Dawn versus Dusk ultimately based on the colorways. Yeah. And we do see beautifully done, uh, somewhat like cartoon-esque uh court cards here which actually reminds me of like the old cartoon show Yu-Gi-Oh which is super weird that that like throws me back there but that's kind of what it reminds me of a little bit I really dig the artwork on it the one thing for this deck too I have to say is like I think the story would really allow for continued breakup of the images here so you had a little bit of text in between them all I think this is a really well done image but at the same time breaking it up with some text between makes it so you're not as prone to just scrolling all the way down you know and losing some of that information or some of that visibility yeah I, I kind of get like a steampunk vibe yeah. off this deck definitely um yeah yeah, the back design is a little bit like the uh, the bicycle steampunk decks that we've seen in the past, or the cyberpunk. I think that's what it is. The cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's definitely an interesting campaign. Really well put together. Glad to see that they 
are jumping into, you know, these limited coins and some other little add-ons. I don't see anything in the way of stretch goals, which I always think is interesting, especially because Kardec gets a pretty good response from the collector's community. I think those uh, stretch goals might help even drive the campaign further beyond this. And they could probably have done simple stuff like, you know, a custom brick box or a half brick box or, you know, I mean, some sort of like Egyptian pyramid or a sarcophagi uh, half brick box. I mean, like a pyramid was kind of just done, you know. You <laughs> so. I mean, yeah. I, I would have liked to see. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of confusing. Whereas we have the Egyptian side, and then it's like cyberpunk. You know, it kind of throws me I mean, off. That's, that's the what's whole it, what's theme. What's the price coming in at? Uh, price points coming in at yen, twenty-two dollars. Which, all things considered, you're sitting here with a foil and a boss tuck. Um, the cards themselves, I don't recall seeing anything about metallic inks or anything. So it's a little bit on the high side with that. I'd say probably. 2021 shipped would have been the price point for me. 22 is not a big deal on it, um, especially if you're into the artwork. Yeah, dude, those talk boxes are yeah, epic. No, they really are. Super epic. 589 backers. They're doing great. That they are, man. And it's interesting to see, you know, I think all things considered, that's a relatively low goal depending on the print run on this. And that's the one thing that they don't actually mention here is the print run. So this could be limited to 500 each and they're only printing a thousand and then that 3,600 makes a little more sense. But for two decks with foil at a thousand run, so kind of low goal, all things considered, but definitely yeah, sure. a dope deck. Good yeah, luck. good luck. And for this week's first good campaign, we have the Metal Coins Deck of Card 100% Reproduction, a poker game. I'll tell you right now, the one thing is I have not read this title yet and I do think it is not doing itself any service there by not having a descriptive title. This is actually a really cool underwater kind of pirate treasure themed uh, deck of cards and coins. Leverage that in the title. F keywords and SEO for these titles is crucial. And while it is in the subtitle there, more often than not, people are not going to be reading the subtitle if the main title does not catch their eye. So first and foremost, to me, that stands out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would be great to see the gold of the sea, a pirate treasure like right yeah. there play poker like a real pirate ah. that would have been dope i mean even if they had just said 17th century pirate treasure coins and deck of playing cards something as simple as that where it's at least touches on the theme and the idea behind it um i actually really enjoy the way they laid out this campaign though the one thing i will say is that this font is very small on a pc on a Mobile device, it may be a little bit larger, but it is important to consider that with Kickstarter, you're looking at about a 50-50 split between mobile and desktop. So you want to make sure that you're actually keeping desktop in mind as well. Um, I, I, yeah, and on my, my screen, I can't even see it. Yeah, really. I mean, I can read it here, but like it's tiny and I know it's probably easy to try and shove as much information as possible into the campaign, but you want to think about that flow and that, that layout there. So... Talks yeah. immediately about some of the things they're going to be creating. So coins, deck of cards, playing mat and purse. The one thing that stands out to me too with this campaign is it's clearly pretty well centered around the coins. So while this does have a deck of cards with it, I wouldn't say the deck of cards is one of the primary focuses of this, even though it is geared towards poker. And like with that, and because there's such a focus on the coins, to me, that stands out more. I almost would have switched a little bit and i would have actually approached this as instead of coins in a deck of cards i've actually would have approached this as like a poker set i would have looked for a way to do a treasure box style poker box with cards and using these coins as the chips and i think yeah. that would have a probably drawn a lot more attention to the campaign because people love a good poker set it would have and i love pirates. and they love pirates no question about it the other thing i really actually like about this deck is the fact that they use the traditional you know swords coins cups tarot. and wands and even beyond tarot it's before tarot it's the original you know french style suits of decks of cards that european vibe to it versus the hearts diamonds spades and clubs i really like dig that i think it fits well with this because it's a 17th century pirate theme but one other thing that really stands out here is um, the printer is mentioned, but it's not a printer that is, or the printer is actually not mentioned. Apologies for that. The finished product will be made in a professional printing house with the highest quality. To me, that's first and foremost, if you're looking to sell a deck of cards, you need to let people know what deck, who's going to be printing it. Even if it's an unknown printer, just putting a name there 
will make people feel more comfortable with it, even if it's a local printer, who knows? At this point, I think that plays into it, especially if people are looking to use these as everyday poker decks. They wanna be able to know how they're gonna feel, how long they're gonna last, are they plastic, are they paper? So there's a lot of details about the deck itself that's actually missing in this. Yeah, and I'd like to know, I mean, I, I think somewhere in here it says it's a normal standard size, but in that image, it looks like it's a mini Yeah, deck. and that very well could just be a rendering issue there. Yeah. But I agree, it did look very, Tiny. Um, I do also dig the style of the kind of way they did this font here for the shipping. Can't read but it. yes, this text is extremely small. And ultimately, yeah, like, illegible. yeah, it would have been easier kind of. This is also where a fulfillment company comes into play a lot of times because they make this a lot easier to handle. Um, a lot of these prices are varying a lot, and I understand the need for a lot of this information. But at the end of the day, it would have been easier to read this in a different format. So, yeah. Um, we have the pledge tiers here. The other thing that makes me think this is more corn, corn, more coin oriented is the fact that you have the deck of cards as a tier, but you also have the coins as a tier and a lot more tiers surrounding the coins. So to me, the coins is the primary focus of this and the deck is more of an afterthought. That being said, I would have made it so that you could had you could or had to get both together. That would have made for a yeah. better push there. Again, I still think this campaign is missing the one thing that would have made it sell out easily is the idea of a poker set around this. Yeah, so, I agree. Again, 501 coins also, that gets very pricey there. $909 shipped for 501 coins. That's a, that's a lot, that's a lot of coins there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, yeah. So, and what are we looking at price point wise on this deck? I think we're looking at see here 11 dollars shipped so that also to me raises a question of oh. the uh printer like at 11 dollars shipped how is the quality of the deck it may also be and now that i'm thinking about this let's roll back up to it um so yeah the interesting thing about this is there's shipping shipping is it after the I fact not uh it looks like it so i will say yeah. off the off the cuff Shipping as an additional aspect to a campaign is a terrible idea. The reason being, you're now telling people, hey, this is going to cost you $11, but then when we actually go to charge you for it, we're going to probably charge you 20 something dollars. I mean, looking at this campaign here, we're looking at North America, 12 euros, so about $15. So this turns out to be a $26 deck, which is way, way too, too much. much, way, way, way too much. Yeah. And it's not transparent in that because someone's going to see this and be like, oh, dude, $11, that's easy. I'll get one. Even if it's garbage, I yeah. like the style, $11, no big deal. Now it ends up costing $26. You need that deck to be spectacular. This is a deck that I would yeah. say, if this does not fund, do not give up on this idea. I think the idea of this as a poker set would be brilliant. Oh, yeah. Take that back to the drawing board and really run with it. So yeah, good luck. And for this week's first needs help deck, we have the Athena, a Greek playing card deck. There's another one. So. Big ol' beware on this one off the jump. Uh, one of the things we have seen recently is a slew of campaigns from a single graphic designer out of Denmark. This is now the fourth campaign, I believe, that they have done for a deck of cards, two of which one just recently fulfilled, or recently funded. Funded. One is currently funding on Kickstarter. So this is the fourth account created for this person to make decks of cards. First and foremost, I'll say without having any of them fulfilled, this comes off as a scam. I would not back this if yeah. you were paying for the deck because there's a very good chance this isn't going to happen. The other thing that- They're laid out the same too. Yeah, they're all laid out the same. They all have the same kind of styling to them. The other thing that stands out on this deck, you'll notice, they're saying that this is a printed in Italy, gold foil, gold gilded deck, and the price point is $25. Fine, that's actually reasonably priced. How are you having a foiled- Printed gilded deck at twenty six hundred dollars. You're, You're not. not like gilding on a thousand decks because I believe this is a thousand deck run they're going for. Let's see if we can find the sticker to confirm that. All right, so no comp no no pr print layout specified. But let's even say this is a hundred deck run, hundred deck run on two decks. So you have two hundred decks. That's best case. Even if you find someone to do a garbage gilding job probably gonna cost you seven eight hundred dollars so immediately seven eight hundred dollars out of your twenty six hundred you're now looking at sixteen hundred dollars to print two hundred decks which is feasible and then shipping 
So like, this to me immediately just stands out as a problematic campaign on multiple levels. The goal is way too low. The price is actually reasonable. The story is all right, but who's printing? Who's fulfilling? And why do you have four open campaigns? I, I highly recommend people staying away from this creator. Uh, creator. Yeah. I mean, until one of their campaigns actually fulfills and they stop right. trying to circumvent the rules of Kickstarter of setting up one campaign at a time. The other thing I will say on this one, too, is that there are zero updates on any of their campaigns post funding. And there was actually a comment on one of the previous ones, the Luna deck saying, hey, when can we expect an update? And the creator responded saying, we'll be updating you shortly. And that still has not happened. So one thing I would keep in mind with all of these is this creator now has three outstanding decks, one of which is still actively funding the Egyptian playing cards. With that in mind, this just reeks of a scam. Dude, right here. Look at go go back down at that. Look at. So I have added it to all the three box designs. What does that mean? There's three decks? Looks like two, but that's crazy if so. Yeah, look at that. Cream color with gold foil. Beige color with white and gold foil. Navy color with white and gold foil. So you have the cream one, the navy one. The navy. And, oh, here we go. Deck one, deck two, which really they look like the same color. Yeah, there's no way you're printing three decks for $2,600 and gilding the edges. Uh, good luck. Yeah, I mean, not even good luck. Beware. If you back this, if you're one of yeah, those 33 don't, don't backers, you're really just watch out. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. So let's check out what else we got this week. First up for another great deck, we have the Rainbow Prides First Edition playing cards and enamel pins. It's always fun to see enamel pins get brought into the playing card community because I think they actually have their own pretty interesting collector community separate and apart from cards. I always like to see that little bit of crossover. All things considered a really well put together campaign. Talks about the printer, the fulfillment, really shows off the styling of it as well and the theme behind the deck. For anyone who's a cardist out there, there's so much versatility in the visuals of this deck. It's really well done. Good luck. And for another great deck this week, we have the 666 Greedy Gold and Skeletal Silver Cold Foil Playing Cards from Riffle Shuffle. Again, no shocker here. Riffle Shuffle always puts out a great campaign. And these 666 playing cards are a huge, huge series for them. So it's really exciting to see them bringing Cold Foil to the process. These things are going to pop off great. And honestly, price point wise, for a cold foil deck, $23 is a steal. Yeah, they always know what Absolutely. they're doing. Absolutely. Good luck. And for another great campaign this week, we have the Kata's Almanac number no. five transformation playing cards reproduction from Will Roya of playingcarddecks.com. So obviously, Will, this is his fifth deck in this series, and by far he's created 25 decks. Another great campaign from him. Glad to see him putting a features section in there. I think it really looks good in the campaign. Love the fact that he puts in the story. I gotta say, and we say this every time, his campaigns are long, but it's because they're really <laughs> jam-packed with a ton of history and information to it. Um, all things considered, I'd say there's probably some pairing that could happen there just to make it a little bit shorter, but still a great campaign, no doubt. Good luck. And for another great campaign this week, we have the... Orderant Dum Metuint, which I probably butchered that there. Orderant Dum Metuint. There you go. Orderant Dum Metuint playing cards. Printed by Hanson Chen, fulfilled by Gambler's Warehouse. Right off the bat, you have the printer and fulfillment there, which I think is great. This is a fun little uh, cardistry deck as well. Got some interesting kind of artistic styling to it. And I have to say, to me, this might actually have the best Jokers I've seen so far this year. I absolutely love the Super Jokers dope. on this deck. And it's at a great price point, too, at $20 shipped a deck for a fully custom cardistry deck there. That's cool. Yeah, I love those jokers, man. No doubt. Good luck. And next up for another great deck this week, we have the Jet Setter Playing Cards Lounge Edition in Hangar Orange. So for anyone who knows Paul Ruggio, Paul does amazing work with the Jet Setter Playing Cards. And I love the aviation theme behind this. Paul really brings it hard with that aviation styling to it. And this actually is probably one of my, like, most underrated decks out there right now. I feel like Jet Setters is still being slept on and anyone who's missing out on this, Paul does amazing work with this. Printed by Expert, they handle great, feel great. Just a fun all around everyday deck. And he's awesome. Person. Really is. Good luck, Paul. And next up for another great deck this week, we have 
the Wonder Playing Cards Scarlet Edition from Chris Haji. Aga. Aga. <laughs> Chris. The only reason why I know that is because Chris, I Chris, I apologize. <laughs> now I know, and I knew before, and I still mispronounced it, so you're always going to be Chris Haji to me. <laughs> but that being said, Chris Haga, great looking deck for anyone who loved the Blue Wonder Playing Cards. This red series looks just as beautiful. The one thing that always stands out to me on this deck is that 3D-esque kind of vibe to the back design. It just looks so absolutely clean with that shadowing. Yeah. So always excited to see that. And as everyone knows, Steve and I love Paisley. So absolutely great deck there. Good luck. And for another good deck this week, we have the Nocturna playing cards from Kanye Design. Beautiful rookie deck here, really awesome looking stylization to it. The one thing that stands out to me is the actual aspects of the deck itself and the campaign itself are a little, you know, first time around. The risks and challenges section is relatively minimal. Uh, they do touch on some of the stuff, but I do think there's a lot more they could have included in there in a more built out way. From the fulfillment point of view, I think it's very important to mention who's going to be fulfilling this. They do mention that a local Polish printer will be printing the deck, so at least we know who's going to be printing, which I think is great. Nicely done for a first-time creator. One of the things, though, that also stands out to me is, while this is actually a really reasonably priced deck, the goal on this campaign itself is potentially a little low, depending on shipping, and knowing that being European-based, most of your shipping is probably going to go to the U.S., so it's going to be higher than you anticipate. With that in mind, it's always important as a first-time creator to really make sure that the price point for your goal is on point. With that being said, because there's an unknown printer here, it could be $2,000 to print the deck, and that other $4,000 could be shipping, so they could be considering that, all things there. But from a transparency point of view, just want to mention the goal. So, good luck. And for another good campaign this week, we have the Yoga Deck Yoga Cheat Sheet Playing Cards. Another Cheat Sheet Playing Card deck. Honestly, the campaigns themselves are pretty well put together, but the one thing that stands out to me on this one is they never really mention who the printer or fulfillment's going to be, which is always something we want to know. And for a single deck run, $15,000 is pretty high depending on the print run. So at that price point, it's probably worthwhile to mention what the print run's going to be. If it's 10,000 decks, it maybe makes a little more sense. But if you're only printing 1,000 decks, 15,000 is a very high goal. So good luck. And for another good deck this week, we have the Breakthrough Playing Cards. Very cool campaign, well put together, really interesting style to it of the kind of out door theme to the border and a lot of the pips and indices really kind of dig how minimalist the center back design is on this but very nicely put together mentions printer and fulfillment there so great job and good luck and for this week's first needs help campaign we have the iconic rappers poker card deck so to me off the bat poker card deck probably doesn't stand out with the with the you know, normal language you'd use around a playing card deck. It's an interesting concept. The one thing that always stands out with these is have you gotten permission to use these people's likenesses? Always a licensing concern there. Also, who's printing and fulfilling the deck? So as a first time creator, a lot of research probably should have gone into the feasibility of this deck before launching it, but good luck. And for another needs help campaign this week, we have the Botanic Autumn playing cards. So first time creator here, doesn't mention printer, doesn't mention fulfillment. And really the story is more so about the creator than the deck itself. Really consider building out a good story here to help sell it, but also make sure you have a lot of the necessary information here to ensure that the campaign actually makes people curious and interested and comfortable with it. That being said, some extra days can be added due to COVID-19, but you will be updated if it happens. Thanks for your support. Risks and challenges are completely lacking there. And to me, that's a bit of a, of a warning sign there is that they haven't considered all of the potential pitfalls for this. So something to consider there as a first time creator, you want to make sure that your backers are as comfortable and confident as possible in your campaign. So Steve, what are you backing this week? I'd hop on ODM, nice. Jet Setters, 666, and... Even though I'm not a fan of red, I would hop on Wonders just because it's such a dope deck. Nice, man. I'd say I'm I'm definitely on board with all those. I'd also probably throw on the uh, the Akaton, which I feel like I'm saying 100% incorrect, but I don't even care. The Egyptian futuristic deck, because I actually really dig the style, and I was really a big fan of the Skodos deck. I love the work that Kardec does, so I think it's a really, really dope deck. 
That tuck box, dude, is ridiculous. Absolutely spectacular. Yeah. And for everyone out there, make sure to drop a comment down below and let us know what decks you'd be backing this week. Obviously, we're always interested in what's backed by the people who watch these videos, which ones you really like, which ones you stay away from. If anyone out there is backing any of the ones we're saying beware of, let us know how they turn out as well. We're always curious to see if what we're saying are beware and red flags actually turn out to be scams or if they do miraculously fulfill. So make sure to let us know in the comments down below. Steve, ready for it? Hit me. It is the time for some fun <laughs> campaigns. But I think I'm going to surprise you this week. I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if you have the capacity to surprise me anymore. But with that being said. You would said, think it's kind of cliche. This is my first like cliche backing, I think. Okay, fair enough. I think that's I think that's fine, though. I think there's a opportunity to be cliche sometimes with some of these things because, hey, they're they're interesting to see. But before yeah. we jump into this week's fun campaigns, let's take a quick word from our sponsor here, and then we'll get back and tell you all what we're backing on the fun side. One of our favorite decks of 2020, the Wonder Playing Cards feature beautiful 3D back designs and an amazing tuck printed by Clove Street Press. Check out the latest version, Scarlet, live now on Kickstarter. Odorant Dumb Matuant is an opulent cadastry deck designed with cuts and flourishes in mind, including metallic inks, fully custom faces to perfectly match the refacing theme and a handmade matte tuck box. ODM, now available on Kickstarter by our cards. So Steve, ready for it? Let's see what you got, buddy. Let's do it, man. My first fun campaign this week is the Clue Box, an escape room in a box. Captain Nemo's Nautilus. I gotta say, I'm always 50-50 on these like birch box puzzles or like birch wood puzzles because I always feel like birch wood feels flimsy or it doesn't know. Super, super feeling for sure. Yeah. You know, I got one of these things from, you know, um, a designer and putting it together feels super cheap. Yeah but it never broke yeah, and that's the thing kinda... they always surprise me like that and i think it's really cool to see people make puzzle boxes out of these and by no means is this a new idea but i'm really excited to see this one because they build a great story out around i mean geez 2200 backers one hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars, absolutely crushing yeah. it so far you take a look and it talks about the concept it talks about the box itself and they actually even show a little bit of all the mechanisms to it and the journey that you take with the box. Obviously being a big fan of the story behind things, seeing the actual story itself displayed on the box is super cool. And it looks like it actually comes in two different sizes there as well. And in additionally, it seems like this company has actually built a lot of puzzle boxes before. So they also have some offerings with some of the other puzzle boxes like the Schrodinger's Cat, Davy Jones' nice. Locker. So these are some really cool, interesting kind of fun stuff. That Cryptos one is super fun. Dude. That's what I'm saying. These just look really, really cool. I love the style of them. The fact that, what do they have? Greeting, greeting cards. Interesting. Interesting is the least of what I'm thinking here. That's just super strange, but I'm down with it, man. Especially if it's like a moving parts birthday card, that would be dope. But yeah. very cool artwork, very cool kind of style to this. I really, really dig this whole puzzle box kind of thing. And all things considered, what are we looking at here? The standard size one, $42, which really all the moving parts on that isn't too bad. How much is the standard size? I mean, the, no, I guess large, I guess. Um, so About 70 bucks. Let's see here. Create um the mega box is no that's that's for more than one i think yeah but i think that's the only way you get the big one yeah so oh, the okay. mega box is 212 dollars. so that big one is like 160 bucks so i'd be getting the small one that's for sure <laughs> you and me you and me both that cryptos is Yo, it really bro. is cool and i think the way they did this too i don't know if the cryptos is available as an add-on or if they did them with like standardized tiers here where you see like there's a tier for all three versus the God damn dude that thing is a lot i'm just i'm just shocked at how big how much that one big box cost but how big is it um it's in millimeters so i'm not going to be able to tell you accurately yeah. <laughs> um Looks like you can About get the eight by the, eight by uh, eight uh, is cryptos. what it looks like. Eight by eight by oh, wow. eight size wise. Um, actually, 
I mean, that's pretty big. Seven, sorry, about seven, seven and a bit by seven and a bit. So like seven by seven by seven. That is pretty good size. Yeah. Yeah. Still. That Cryptos looks like it's an add-on. Yeah. Which, hey, that's cool. You pick up the standard, yeah. pick up the Cryptos and you're good to go. But for sure, good luck to them on this one. I'm always excited to see things like this coming out. So I'm excited to see what else I'd venture comes out with. Nice. And good luck. Man. Ready for your campaign? I'm ready for your <laughs> campaign. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. <laughs> the X Xtar SN4 Xtar. 7 in 1 multiple camera battery charger. All right, the photographer Game and changer. Steve comes out. This is interesting, man. All, all that the first thing I have to say though, lit, I'm I'm going to back this, 100% going to back this because it will definitely make my life a lot easier. Um but this campaign is epically long and epically confusing. That's the only thing that I recommend that this campaign does is like, just make it a little more understandable. Yeah. You know, there's just so many pictures, these, you know, gifts, videos, and it's just so confusing, you know? And obviously they have multiple variants that you can interchange between Sony, Nikon, Canon, and stuff like that. Um, so it just can get a little confusing, but dude, this thing's awesome. It allows you to have one bank, um, you know, one central bank where you can charge all your gadgets it looks modular you know, too which is really cool so you can customize yeah. what you're charging at any given point in time dude it's so good and it's it's super cheap yeah it, super cheap you can get the standard charger for 39 bucks that's not bad at all considering a lot of times a replacement oem charger is going to cost you a lot more than that oh 100 yeah i mean this thing's so great i, don't, I mean uh, every photographer and videographer knows you know having three or four different you know, battery charges and just getting kind of like a, a cert, I mean, you know, a charger, um, an outlet charger basically to charge everything is a hassle. Yeah. So having everything on one bank is just so amazing. That's really cool. Yeah. Oof. There you go. If you want 10 docks, 10 chargers, $600. <laughs> but again, $39.95 or whatever it is, $39 even for, uh, I feel like it's like infomercial pricing that $39 for a, uh, <laughs> for the early bird on these chargers is really not a bad deal at all. Yeah. The cool thing about it is they don't have a ton of tiers, yeah. you know, so that's not the confusing part. The confusing part just is like a ton of stuff. figuring out what the hell is like, yeah. what am I getting? You know, and they show kind of their old versions compared to their new version. And it's just a little bit confusing. So I'm going to have to spend some time but throw it. this thing's dope i definitely love the use of the timeline as well which i think you know we've mentioned this in the past timelines are always great to show where things are going but i like the fact that 2006 the team is established and they start thinking about this like it's also good to show the history and build the story in with it there so timelines are always a great aspect to any campaign including playing yep. card campaigns but dude, this looks really cool yeah so cool very nice well good luck on that one I gotta say, man, it was a crazy week this week with some of those campaigns. For anyone out there, definitely beware of those Athena playing cards. Again, very strange that a creator is creating multiple accounts in order to run simultaneous campaigns without having fulfilled in the past. Definitely a giant red flag. So again, just beware. And then ultimately, everyone, we really appreciate all of you checking out this week's video. If you haven't already, make sure to like the video, share it with a friend, and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, leave a comment down below and let us know what fun stuff you found to back on Kickstarter this week. Whether it be kitchen appliances, playing cards, coins, cell phone chargers, battery chargers, or anything under the sun. Because Kickstarter just has so much cool stuff on it and we always love to hear what you're all checking out. Later.